Good morning, folks. The plasma filament dance at the northeastern limb of the sun has been fantastic for days. We've got some key updates for you here today, and we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours was otherwise very quiet. There is not much in the way of eruptive activity affecting the solar wind, but the coronal holes have been doing that for two days, weekly, and that weak stream peaked right around the news time yesterday morning. Never really was much in the way of geomagnetic disruption from it and we're off to asteroid Bennu. The OSIRIS-REx mission has undergone a minor delay, and the touchdown and scoop of asteroid material for return to Earth has been pushed back from August to October, going to be that 20th day of the 10th month. Up next, we're going way out in the galactic plane, directly away from the center of the galaxy. We'll go the other way later in the show. But here, at galactic midnight longitude, we found the birth of a planet that rivals the ones we saw yesterday for impressiveness and does so all by itself. The swirling gas around a young planetary system is kinked near the middle where the spiral arms pinch in and twist. Remember, the magnetic fields of young disks are most threaded within the dusty spiral arms, and so here, we have seen the VLT reveal the pinch of these fields at the inception of a planet's life. Up next, a quick note on space weather energy dissipation. It's always good to get a better understanding of the solar terrestrial electromagnetic coupling interactions, and it turns out that the majority of the energy that is dissipated up in the magnetic shell of the planet does so near the current sheets, but not within them. Of course, that's only because within them, the energy keeps flowing down to the ionosphere and then couples with the remainder of the atmosphere below via the global electric circuit. The top story today is in cosmology, and we're once again using the radio wavelengths of ALMA combined with Hubble to see the earliest known massive rotating galaxy to date. As if it wasn't bad enough that these massive galaxies and massive quasars were appearing too early for the cosmic timeline, known popularly as the impossibly early galaxy problem for the Big Bang. But now we know that was supposed to be a collision-heavy chaotic period, but it has allowed at least one massive rotator to settle into its spinning groove. And that's also a big problem for the timeline. This big, rotating peacefully, not supposed to have happened that early in the cosmos. Little bonus info nugget to close here for those who did their homework yesterday and learned about the nearby stars and other planets showing signs of the cosmic event taking place. You remember how Pluto was the focus of yesterday's top story, the first sign of its similar changes as well. Well, if you can spot Jupiter and Saturn there nearly conjoining the center of the galaxy, from where the sheet is approaching, Pluto is hiding right back there behind the gas giants of our system, in the direction of the galactic center the outer gatekeeper of the solar system. And so, for those who are tracking the ongoing solar system shift, that's the nearby stars in line with the galactic center, the other planets, and everyone gets in line to wait their turn. The Pluto changes are indeed the strongest we've seen at any planet. Full Cosmic Disaster playlist is linked below as it is every day with our other full movies and playlists. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.